welcome back. Should we go on an escapist summer holiday? <laughs> Via a fragrance, sad to say. But God, there are some great fragrances out there. I've chosen some new ones, but I've also chosen some classics that I think when you unstopper them, just one deep inhalation takes you somewhere by the sun with warm beaches and sun warmed skin and cocktails and oh gorgeous white heady flowers shall we <laughs> come on come along with me the truth is that despite looking through my instagram feed and and seeing some places in, in the states that are coming out of lockdown most of us are still like leslie jordan my discovery of this whole coronavirus thing if you haven't followed him on instagram do uh, he's at leslie jordan um uh, we're all fellow hunker downers aren't we we really are so let's just escape via a fragrance. I don't know if you know, but the sense of smell is the, the, the sense most closely connected to your memory. And I remember writing a piece for Marie Claire years ago called Fragrance, Mood and Memory. And uh, the limbic system, which is the, the emotional system, the, the part that part of the brain basically sits right close to the back of the nose. In fact, some people think that the, there are parts of the nose that are almost behave like the brain. Anyway, it's a really small synaptic pathway between the back of your nose and your memory. And it's why the smell of cut grass can take you back to your childhood, to those long summer holidays when you were so bored in the 70s and 80s. Or the smell of hot tarmac can remind you of learning to ride a bike when you were a child. Or the smell of cinnamon will remind you instantly of Christmas. I mean, there are just so many sensual sense memories that are connected with scent um, and key moments in your life and it's why you know you can smell a certain fragrance and it'll take you back to the first time you had a kiss or you had a slow dance I mean I could go on and on and on anyway there is an actual physical reason that the back of your nose is really closely connected to and directly connected to the limbic system which is the um, emotional and memory connective part of your brain so fragrances can make you smell good or bad it's why I can walk down the street smell somebody and despite this whole politically correct you're not supposed to touch people I find myself just sidling up to total strangers and going oh my god you smell amazing I mean lucky enough I can get away with it at my age right um but I literally do grab people in the street and tell them they smell amazing so let's go on a summer holiday with a proviso you know me right that you're not going to get anything here that smells like a cheap 18 to 30 holiday uh, with sickly cocktails that's just not me they're out there you'll find them left right and center there's lots of things with notes of raspberry and peach bellini that's not happening here these are long hot summer days with that sort of sound of the cicadas um, warm baked skin and probably an ice cold prosecco um, let's start anyway Floral Street have, um, and I don't know if you know Floral Street, but you should know Floral Street. It's an English fragrance company and they have the most beautiful flacons. It's really, really lovely. And this is their brand new one and actually doesn't hit counter till end of June. So you've got two weeks to wait. And it's called Arizona Bloom. And it's actually not my typical kind of fragrance, but I was sent it because it's brand new and I'm so welcoming of anything new that I'm being sent it at the moment. And I opened it up and I looked at it and thought, oh, you know, it's gonna be a pretty floral. It's not really for me. I tend to like down and dirty fragrances and then what happened was I, I had the package open in my kitchen and I every time I walked past it I just got this incredible waft of gorgeousness and it is beautiful in fact I think it might be my all-time favorite floral street fragrance and I'm really surprised to say this I really am so let me tell you a little bit about it it's um it's obviously inspired by the blooming flowers the night blooming flowers in the Arizona desert I have never been to Arizona it's somewhere I'd like to go but I've certainly been to Nevada which is relatively close and you just see those amazing landscapes with those cactus and those occasional summer flowers and so essentially it's salted musk which is really interesting so musk is a traditional warm slightly animalic note made to smell like warm skin but salted musk smells like salted dry down sweaty skin which makes it sound terrible but it doesn't it smells really sexy um it's got dry amber which i love i mean i'm an amber person anyway amber is a tree resin that um gives something a warm 
sexy dry down and it's got black pepper uh, and coconut and now this is really interesting this is the closest you're going to come to something that that smells coconutty as in sort of you know suntan lotions coconut and, and oat moss and oat moss is my all-time favorite oat moss and patchouli are my two all-time favorite dry downs but this doesn't have that that sort of um sort of gut-wrenching patchouli patchouli can be quite a kind of room rocker i call it um and patchouli is a little bit love hate i personally love it but so what you've done is by having the oak moss and the amber with this sort of sorted musk what you've done is you've created something that is that is sexy and gorgeous and skin scent warm skin scent nuzzly but it doesn't have that sort of slightly dare i say it old lady feeling that patchouli can sometimes have. It smells much more modern. It's it's exquisite. It really is exquisite. I'm gonna take off the little thing. I mean, I've already, by the way, all of the packaging for Floral Street is completely compostable and I do really love it. So let me get my spill here and just scent it into the air. I mean, it smells originally quite unisex. So the top notes are slightly powdery, almost slightly citrusy and very green but then it's as with all of my fragrances and a lot of these now you're going to notice are citrus but I've chosen that all of the citrus have a slightly sort of dirty sexy underbelly to them which I really like it's beautiful it's absolutely exquisite it is without a doubt my favorite and I just don't think there's anybody you could buy this for or wear it yourself that wouldn't like it man or woman it's without a doubt my favorite floral street fragrance I love it. I think I talked about the rhubarb one last time, didn't I? They all come in that beautiful flacon, by the way. It doesn't stand, well, it sort of stands up, but basically it's made to, to sit in the palm of the hand. Well done, Floral Street. Let me move that over there. Um, and it makes me want to go on holiday to Arizona to one of those beautiful minimalist spas. Have you seen them? Um, back in the day, the glossy magazines always used to do these shoots there, with these sort of red craggy gorgeous rocks and then there would be somebody in a sort of sky blue or white dress billowing in the wind and then in the distance there would be, there'd be these sort of flat earthenware type modernist buildings oh, I've gone off on one now let's get back to work shall we um let's look at some citrusy noty fragrances that I really like that I think you'll like and that were directly inspired by by places abroad by the either the perfume creator or the perfumer. So the difference between a, a perfume creator, somebody like, for example, Jo Malone, is Jo Malone actually doesn't blend her own fragrances, but she has that ability to identify notes, to, um, to brief the perfumer, who is normally a man or a woman in a lab coat, who understands the chemistry of fragrances, but they have this ability to articulate and appreciate individual notes and smell something. So for example, I couldn't smell something and say, oh, I think that needs a touch more amber. People like Jo Malone do. They're very clever. Um, anyway, so this is a Jo Loves Orange Butterflies. And it, what Jo Malone does better than anybody, and I'm gonna go on to one of the Zara fragrances, I believe is the Citrus Accords. Uh, she readily admits that the Citrus Accords are her favorite, and this is exquisite. Rather than be a, being a very simple, almost sort of shallow, and by that I don't mean shallow intellectually, I mean shallow in terms of the notes, uh, Citrus Accord, this is exquisite. And I know I've talked about it before. So this is um, basically, Joe's Ode to Her Holidays in the South of France, and it is lovely. It's orange blossom, pettigran, neroli, mandarin, um, uh, and it's very sweet when you originally smell it, but then, as usual, it becomes quite refreshing. So you get that combination of, of, a, of a, a sweet mandarin kind of note, um, almost like a sort of lovely mandarin, sparkling, fresh uh, Presse, but then it dries down to a much more green citrusy note and it's just absolutely beautiful it is oh it's lovely she does make the most elegant fragrances i'm actually going to spray that on myself i mean it's just it's very slightly powdery very slightly sweet it's absolutely beautiful can i just say look that's what you get look at that oh little metallic cap Beautiful packaging. I think still there are a lot of people that don't realize that Jo Malone no longer works with her own eponymous brand. She now has a brand called Jo Loves. It's at Space NK. If you get the chance, if you're a citrus lover, go down, sniff them all out. You will not be disappointed. You'll find one. But don't think of them as being superficially citrus. They're citrus, but with a, a 
a lovely kick of a heart at them. I mean, by, by that I mean they're sort of, you know, they, they seduce you in and then they sort of sucker punch you into these sort of slightly deeper, sexier, skin-friendly notes. Let's jump straight to another one that actually Jo Malone created, and I love this. This is Amalfi Sunray, and this is one of the uh, Zara fragrances. Um, and again, you might not have seen my most recent videos. Last year, Jo Malone decided to create a diffusion line with Zara. There is not a duff one in the collection. There, there are ouds, there are bluebells, there are fragrances, there are florals. Obviously the citrus is to me or a highlight. This is an ode to her holidays in Amalfi and Amalfi is on the Italian Riviera. So we're going further south than France now. So you're getting something that's slightly more sea based here. It's, it's slightly more coastal, shall we say. So this is a bergamot, mandarin and orange blossom. Um, and on the, sadly, on the, um, do you know, can you just say, can I just say, very similar but not metallicized because that's obviously what you don't get for like 25 quid. The interesting thing about this one is you, you, um, you do get a strong sense. I don't know if you've ever landed in Italy or in places like actually Turkey as well and Greece. And they sort of, wherever you land, especially if you're traveling on a budget, so I'm going back to my youth here, you'd get out of the, the plane and you'd be all hot and bothered and you'd sort of get on a coach all the class. And uh, the driver would, would literally spray this sort of classic cologne in the air. This smells very like the, the classic med cologne, I would say. I mean, <laughs> super green, super citrusy, super lovely. It's almost like her reworking of a classic EDT. So sort of um, 4711 Wasser, but instead of going the slightly middle European lavender um, herbal note, she's kept it purely classically. Um, citrusy. It's exquisite. It's an absolutely exquisite fragrance. It really is and it's really reasonably priced. One day we'll all get back into the shops and you'll be able to go and smell these, won't you? Should we go to Paris? Okay, so this is really interesting. I've long been a fan of Dipti. They've just, just before lockdown, launched their first ever Chypre. Now, Chypre fragrances are my all-time favourite classic category of fragrance. Um, if you read anything about fragrances, you'll know that, that, that basically there are, there are categories within fragrance. So there are florals, there are orientals, um, there are green oceanic notes, uh, there are citrus notes. Um, and a Chypre is something that tends to be, tends to dry down to something called patchouli and oak moss. And it's very velvety. Um, sometimes they can be citrusy on the top note, sometimes they can be green on the top note, but actually the heart and the base notes tend to be quite sim similar. And they're a little bit of a love-hate for some people. If I tell you that Portrait of a Lady is a classic rose chypre, that, that makes complete sense. And can I tell you this? <sighs> Smells a lot like Portrait of a Lady, but is more modern and wearable. Um, it's one to suss out if you love Portrait of a Lady. It's absolutely exquisite. And it's the perfumer's ode to Paris. So it has a rose top note, but the rose is a lot less blousy um, and, um, and animalic than it is in Portrait of a Lady. Then it has bergamot and that citrus cuts through it and instantly makes it light and much easily wearable. And then patchouli and oak moss, of course. Bloody gorgeous. I'm not really sure it's a high summer fragrance for most people, but it's an evening out fragrance. If you can't get to Paris and you wanna know what it smells like to walk the streets of Paris, this is the fragrance for you. I had to take a quick break there because I just did a live radio show. <laughs> I'm often on Joe Good's Radio London show. Um, Joe Good is on here at Middle Aged Minx. She's amazing. Um, and uh, she often gets me on to answer all of her listeners' calls. And I just did one about lockdown skincare. Anyway, I'm back. Right, let's talk about um, a relatively new beauty range and then an existing absolute classic that I think do take you on specific trips abroad, memories of holidays. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce you to a range, and I have mentioned it before, called Stories by Eliza Grace here. And there's only two fragrances in the range, um, and they're both actually memories of specific holidays um, for the perfumer. So there's Stories number one, um, and I'm going to open them up and show you how absolutely stunning they are. Look, they're beautiful. Super chic, absolutely beautiful. Now, number one is an ode to the French Riviera. 
um, and we've seen Joe's Ode to the French Riviera. Um, however, this one, rather than being on the beach baking yourself all day, uh, this is an ode to grass, and grass is essentially where um, the perfumery industry lives. It's, it's the home of the perfumery industry, and it's why a lot of here, a lot of the fragrances are inspired by France, because a lot of perfumers are French. Anyway, uh, this lady is not a perfumer, um, but she is a little bit like Jo Malone. She's one of those fragrance enablers, sort of fragrance creators, fragrance curators. And this is a really interesting one. This is citrus, bergamot, grapefruit, orange blossom, jasmine and fig. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's elegant, it's beautiful. I mean, this is really interesting. Um, it's, it's, it's sweeter. And it's prettier than Joe's take on the south of France. Now, but if you think about grass, grass is up in the hills. It's not purely about salt water and sunbaked skin and lemons and lime groves. Um, grass is where a lot of the, the flowers that are, are put into fragrances are grown. So as a result, it's much more of a traditional, slightly citrusy uh, for a floral. Um, and I think the fig is quite strong in it. The fig gives something quite a sweet green undertow. Anyway, it's absolutely beautiful. I really like it. That is Stories by Eliza Grace number one. However, I'm a fan of number two. Now, number two, um, I'm not sure if I should include because technically it's not about being abroad. Now, number two is an ode to her grandfather's garden. And who doesn't have that, eh? Who doesn't have memories of their grandparents' garden growing up? So you've got a combination of um, flor a floral garden plus the river plus her grandfather's tobacco. Um, and the minute you say tobacco, obviously, you're happy at tobacco. Um, I mean, it's, oh, I love this. This is what I would call an absolute classic green floral. It is beautiful and elegant. I think most people are going to like number one because it's a much more traditional, sweeter floral. But this to me is absolutely lovely. Um, I was introduced to this brand by my friend Victoria, who I need to get on here to do real women, real makeup, real time. Now, I think it's very interesting about this is she wears this during the day and portrait of a lady at night. And the fact that she wears Portrait of a Lady at Night shows you her taste, her sophisticated taste in fragrance. But she doesn't like Portrait of a Lady during the day because it's slightly too heavy. But this is deceptively simple. And by that I, I mean it's an elegant, beautiful fragrance, but it's actually got quite a complex heart to it. Um, it is, um, and the reason is simple. So it's rose, ginger, cardamom, but the cardamom obviously gives it an interesting, slightly spicy note. It's green tea and honey tobacco. And obviously you have me at honey tobacco because I absolutely love the idea of unusual notes in fragrance. But this is the interesting thing. It dries down to patchouli, which kind of says it all really, because I do absolutely love patchouli. It's exquisite. It's one of those uh, fragrances that I love so much that, that start off relatively straightforward but actually become quite complex in the dry down. I, I cannot urge you enough to go out and check out stories number two. It's more of a trip down memory lane to an, an, an English grandparents garden. I mean I presume she had very nice grandparents um, that if they had a, a river at their end of their garden I presume she had a very you know well-to-do grandparent, but I don't know that for sure. But I love the fact that she's combined the hothouse flowers, um, the notes of the sort of sort of riverbed, the sort of spicy notes of the riverbed with the tobacco, and then that sort of sexy undertow of patchouli. It's beautiful, it's really lovely. Uh, they are my, oh, by the way, they come in body lotions and hair washes, the uh, stories number one and number two. I'm gonna finish with one absolute classic, and actually it's very interesting that I think this is one probably not for high summer, although I would wear it in high summer, but then I'm a fragrance freak. I'm gonna end on an absolute classic note, and that is Chanel Sycamore. And Chanel Sycamore is just pure wood, it's, it's exquisite. Uh, men can wear it, women can wear it. Uh, it's very much an autumnal fragrance, but that wouldn't stop me wearing it in the height of summer. And it's actually um, an ode to Chanel, Coco Chanel's time spent in Auvergne. And if you think about Auvergne, it's, it's very much of a sort of green, foresty area. 
very, very, very um, heavy in trees and woodlands of France. And she used to go there um, on holiday. And I think she might have had a house there at some time. And Sycamore is absolutely exquisite. I also love, by the way, Coromandel. And Coromandel is um, the other, these are the Les Exclusive, Les Exclusive range from Chanel. And Coromandel is made to smell like the the Coromandel is the wood that was used in the screens in her apartment, um, which is a very heady, heavy, almost overpowering place in Paris. It's an apartment in Paris that's it's the exact opposite of how I would want my house to, to be. It's, it's lots of wood and heavy and artifacts and antiquities and stuff like that. Uh, but the the Coromondel screens are absolutely exquisite. So that's a wood one as well, but this is beautiful and it's really light. And you'll notice straight away that I love it because it's top note is vetiver. Vetiver is a beautiful, cool, pale wood that's really lovely. And then you have cedar, uh, which is another beautiful wood as well, and then vanilla. And I'm not normally a fan of vanilla fragrances, but it is really lovely. And it's about the heat and the radiating um, sunlight coming off of the forest floor and the woods and the woodlands of Auvergne, and it's beautiful. Um, so if you think about where Auvergne is, it's, I've, I've taken you to different places in uh, France, but to escape the summer heat of Paris, Coco Chanel used to go to Auvergne, and that is the Ode to Bat. Uh, I just wanted to end on a, a sort of classic note that's been around a while. It's one I've had I, and I really love and I love to use. It's beautiful, but then I do like woody scents. There are a couple of here though that are completely unisex and anybody can use them. I know there's no such thing as gendered fragrances who says that a rose should be feminine, but I know that traditionally most people don't prefer, most people don't prefer heavily buying heavy floral fragrances for the guys in their life. Um, so there are just some here that, that would work for everybody. There's the pure citruses and the pure woods. Um, as I promised, <laughs> there's a holiday waiting to be unstoppered in each of these bottles. What you won't find is a, a blow up lilo, um, thumping music, um, an 1830 holiday and a thong swimsuit with a coconut inspired, although there is coconut in one of them, you can't really smell the coconut, with a coconut sort of cheap suntan lotion inspired because that's what most beauty companies seem to think people want from a holiday in a bottle. I mean, I might have been on, you know, I've never been on that holiday. I was gonna say I might have been on that holiday when I was like 19 or 20, but no, I really, really didn't. Um, but these are all beautiful, beautiful fragrances. I highly recommend them. Because they're light and they're summer fragrances, there's nothing here, probably with the exception, probably with the exception of Eau Capital, that anybody would find remotely um, difficult to digest um, or jarring. I, I understand that my my taste in fragrance can be slightly somewhat left field, so, but the rest of them are all exquisite, easy to wear, and stunningly, stunningly elegant. They really are. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I think probably my next fragrance will be going into snuffly autumn libraries <laughs> and warm fires in autumn, but let's try and enjoy the summer first, shall we? I'm with you. I'm, I'm a fellow hunker downer. We can get through this together. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.